Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Father God, that we can come here to bow before you, to bask in your presence and your glory this morning, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that we can have such an intimate relationship with you, Father God, that we can come and we can just lay it all down before you, Father God, and you will hear us, you will listen, Father God, and you will embrace us, Father God. Father, we thank you this morning, Father, that we can just come to you, Father God. And we can just be who we are, Father God. We don't have to put on a show. We don't have to put on anything, Father God. But come to you, Father God, with our whole heart. Father, we love you and we thank you, Father God. And we take the time, Father God, to forget everything else, Father God, and to come before you with a clear heart and a clear mind, Father God, so that we can receive, Father God, what you are doing today, Father God. So Lord, as you move, Father God, we can receive, Father God. And we position ourselves this morning, Father God, so that as you pour out, you can fill us up, Father God. So we lay it all down, Father God. We lay it all down, Father God, so that we can, when we worship you and when we praise your name, Father God, we can do it with a clean heart, with a clear heart and a clear mind, Father God. Father God, we just thank you this morning, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for all that you've done, for all that you're doing, Father God. And we praise your name this morning. We praise your name this morning, Father God. And we cry out to you this morning, Father God. We cry out to you this morning, Father God. We cry out, Father God, and we cry, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you have a breath, lift him up. If you're breathing right now, lift him up. If you woke up today, lift him up. If you're in your right mind, I said lift him up today. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for a right mind, Lord God, and a sound heart, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, to be free, Lord God, at last, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, Lord God, to be free in our spirits, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that our children should be free, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that our home, Lord God, should be free, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, I praise you, Lord God. We give you glory, Lord God. We give you praise on today, Lord God, because, Lord God, you are worthy, Lord God. You are grateful, Lord God. You are magnificent, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we just thank you on today, Lord God. Because what you doing, Lord God, it's not in vain, Lord God. What you doing in us, Lord God, is for a purpose, Lord God. It's for a reason, Lord God. And in this season, Lord God, I say you're going to get through. You're going to push through in the name of Jesus, Lord God. In your power of your blood, Lord God. Because, Lord God, you so worthy, Lord God. You so grateful, Lord God. You so faithful, Lord God. And we praise you on today, Lord God, and forever praise, Lord God. We welcome you, Lord God. We open up our eyes, Lord God. We open up our ear gates to you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We thank you on today, Jesus. We thank you on today, Lord God. We give you all the praise, Lord God. We welcome you in, Lord God. That we, Lord God, will come in one way, Lord God, but we will leave whole, Lord God, on today, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, in your power of your blood, Lord God, and your mercy and grace, Lord God, shall reign forever, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, lift him up, lift him up in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you for your healing power, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. We thank you for keeping our right minds, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for keeping our jobs, Lord God. We thank you for keeping our lost children, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, just for keeping us just for today, Lord God. 
Hallelujah, Lord God. We give you praise, Lord God, and all the glory, Lord God, that no weapon form can get such a prosper, Lord God. And I tell the devil, you are a liar, Lord God. You are a liar, devil. You are a liar, devil, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And I just lift you up, Lord God, on today, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord.
Come on, just lift your hands to the Lord this morning. When we lift our hands to the Lord, it's a representative of a surrender. He comes in and we'll see you. So, Father, we're going to start this worship service just with a surrender, a lifting of the hands, a lifting of the hearts to you, God. And we say, have your way, God. Do whatever you want to do in us, God. Move however you want to move in our midst. Oh, you're welcome, Lord. He We say hallelujah to your Lord. One more time. Love of the Lord, amen. Amen. Come on, greet a neighbor this morning. Say hi to somebody. Hey, <laughs> good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome into the presence of the Lord. Good morning. Welcome into the joy of the Lord. If you don't feel like moving, just wave at somebody. to the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We are Forever Praise Ministries. We are a family. We are a body fitly joined together. Hallelujah. And we supply one another what is needed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a house of love and this is a house of praise. Hallelujah. 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 We come to tell you that everything you need can be found in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome. 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 Hallelujah. We come to give him glory this morning. Somebody shout glory.
way of escape for us out of every temptation.
weapon formed against me shall prosper. No 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 weapon formed against me shall prosper. No
We can't figure it out. It's too deep and it's too big for us to fully comprehend it. But we thank you for your love, God. That is unconditional and never ending. You win us with your loving kindness. You love our pain away, God. You love the hurt away, God. Hallelujah. You love us, you love us, you love us. Oh, 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 oh. Hallelujah. He can never love me. This is for you, baby. He is jealous for me. Loves like a hurricane. I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. When all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions, eclipsed by glory and I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me and oh how he loves us so oh how he loves us how he loves us so portion and he is our prize drawn to redemption by the grace in his eyes and if grace is an ocean we're all sinking oh but heaven meets earth like a sloppy wet kiss and my heart turns violently inside of my chest and I don't
personal. He loved me. Hallelujah. We ask the gatekeepers to come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you need an offering envelope to raise your hands. Raise your hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here we are in the last Sunday of October, and we're embarking on the last 60 plus days in this year. Amen. And we're looking for God to move as he's done in the past and what he's about to do. Amen. Hallelujah. In the hands of the gatekeepers. Hallelujah. they're coming I just wanted to thank everybody for wishing me a happy birthday on these past few days and all your well wishes and gifts and on the regular meeting yesterday at the gatekeepers they surprised me with a, a, a beautiful fellowship and a happy birthday and I appreciate that amen another year God has truly blessed me to be here amen and don't forget on next Saturday which is the first Saturday of November the women of excellence meeting at one o'clock and also don't forget you may set your clocks back Saturday for Sunday our clocks go back so some of you may be here early, which has happened before. <laughs> Amen. But our clocks go back next weekend. Amen. Hallelujah. Thursday, November the 9th will be the gathering of the prophets at 9 p.m. For any questions, see Pastor Angela. And also on Saturday, November the 11th, is the men's fellowship from 1 to 3.30. Amen. Hallelujah. may be chilly outside but it's hot in here God is moving <laughs> I was cold when I left but amen hallelujah we know how to warm it up amen <laughs> hallelujah dance selection by Sister Renee Lawrence. Let's receive her by saying amen. Yeah. 
When you've done all you can And it seems like it's never enough And what do you say When your friends turn away And you're all alone, all alone Tell me what do you give When you give in Just stand, watch the Lord see you through. Yes, after you've done all you can, you just stand. Tell me, how do you handle the guilt of your past? Tell me, how.
you just stand amen you ready for the word amen at this time i'd like to introduce to you one of the prophets of the house in the person of cornelius tyrone spikes let's receive him by saying praise the lord amen cornelius <laughs> just stand in the presence of the Lord. give it all to you today, God. All that we are, all that we hope to be. We surrender it all today, God. Is there anybody here this morning that has a surrender in their spirit? If there is a fresh surrender in your spirit, you can lift your hands to a holy God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We surrender all. We surrender all to our blessed Savior. We lay it at your feet, Jesus. I surrender. Anybody feel that this morning? I, I surrender all. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, I, I surrender all. Hallelujah, Jesus. All to Thee. I surrender all. Hallelujah, Jesus. We surrender our will to you, Father. We surrender our will to you, Lord. We give you control. We know that we cannot do it without you, Jesus.
So Father, we thank you for opening our hearts this morning. That we may be able to hide your word there within it. Father, we thank you for opening our ears today. That we may be able to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Father, we ask that you would transform us just to restore us back to yourself. We believe that you are a God who is able to do it by your will. We ask this in your holy, holy son's name. Come on and put your hands together for Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. 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 It is always a humbling experience whenever You are to stand before the people of God and speak the word of the Lord. So I stand before you very sober this morning and I thank God because there was a time where I didn't think that I was going to make it back. Things had become so dark. That I couldn't lift my hands. Or even utter a word of prayer. I couldn't even talk to God. But I thank him for even in that season he kept me. And I thank him for seeing fit to restore me. I am eternally grateful to God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I owe him my life. Nothing less will be acceptable. Thank God for pastors who have the ability to see past what you're going through. I thank God for pastors who have the ability to stand and wait for God to move. I gave my pastors every excuse to kick me to the side. But I thank God that they possess the heart of God. They did not shun me. They did not reject me. And when the Lord saw fit to bring me back 
they were standing there with open arms. There is nothing that can be said. To truly communicate to you how deeply grateful that I am so all I can say is glory to God glory to God glory to God glory to God glory glory to God hallelujah Jesus hallelujah Jesus hallelujah Jesus Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Where I was, there was nothing that anybody could say to me. There was nothing that anybody could do for me. I had become one of the most stubborn people that you would ever meet in your life. There was nothing you can do, there was nothing you can say to bring me out of the pit that I had put myself in. Nothing could be done. But when it was time, God reached his hand. And he pulled me out. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. God said, I'm going to get my glory. I am going to get it. I'm going to get it. And so I've come to learn that God's greatest passion is his own glory. And one of the most beautiful things about the relationship between God and man is the fact that we were specifically created to give God what he is most passionate for. His glory. And so once we begin to understand why we were created, once we begin to understand that our very existence is purposed for no other reason, then we can begin to understand how passionate God is for us. The creation meant to glorify him. The creation meant to exemplify who he is. God's desire for us is for him to be able to look at his people and see himself. And so while this concept sounds so extremely beautiful, uh, many times we have to go through an extremely ugly process to get there. 
a process that requires us to look at things in ourselves that we're not so comfortable looking at. A process that requires us to admit and acknowledge things that we become accustomed to ignoring. But if we are going to successfully go through such an in-depth, rigorous process, there has to be a genuine desire to want to get to a place where God is glorified through my life. And if I am not fully invested into the process, then it will be extremely difficult for me to get there. So it's been a couple of years since the last time that I was tapped to speak the word of the Lord before you beautiful people. And a lot has transpired between then and now. Some of which was necessary and some simply because of my bad decisions. But I've come to understand now why my walk with God had reached its tipping point. Because as I had become active in the church and active in ministry, over time I had gotten to a place of comfortability. I was content with where I was in God. And I developed an unwillingness to allow God to go any deeper with me than he had already gone. I was convinced that the level of our relationship was good enough. And it morphed into a perpetual resistance to dealing. I wasn't interested in going any higher in God because I didn't want to go through the dealings that were necessary to get me there. But I'm here to tell you today, people of God, that the Lord has been so passionately speaking to us over the past few weeks, just so that we can begin to embrace the dealings that are going to propel us to another level in God. So if God wants us to see it, we have to look at it. If God wants us to acknowledge it, then we can't make excuses for it. Because when you are called by God, then too much resisting will invite a breaking. And God will strategically allow events to happen in our lives just to show us, look, you're still angry. Look, you're still prideful. Look, you still battle with addiction. And he will illuminate everything that we try to bury with our tongue talkings and worship. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. See, God understands that until we acknowledge that we need for him to deliver us, then he cannot move. Our pastors can plead with us. Our pastors can cry out for us. But until we make a decision that God is going to be glorified through my life, until I develop a genuine desire to go through the necessary steps to be who and what God created me to be, then I will be stuck in my same vicious cycles 
while our pastor continues to place the meat of the word in our mouths just to have too many of us turn around and spit it out oh Jesus oh Jesus oh Jesus but something that I've come to learn, people of God, is that whenever there is a lack of desire to want to be everything that God created me to be, Whenever there is an unwillingness to do whatever it takes to be just that, there in the depths of my heart lies some form of self-rejection. Because to deprive myself of the fullness of God, to deprive myself of the promises connected to who God created me to be is to deprive myself of life itself. How can I say that I love myself and not be willing to get rid of the things that are suffocating my purpose? And hear me, people of God, loving and pacifying my flesh is not the same as loving who I am. Because who I am was made in the image and the likeness of God. So until I embrace that, I am rejecting the real me and I am rejecting God. I know all about that one. I did it for quite some time and it had gotten to a place where God said I can no longer use you like this and everything that I thought I was over everything that I tried to ignore God brought circumstances that made every single one of those things jump up in my face and I was forced to see the anger that I had bottled up inside of me I was forced to see the pride that I had in my heart I was forced to see the distrust that I had towards God and the Lord put it up in my face so good that I could not no longer lie to myself hallelujah hallelujah everything that I tried to convince myself I was over there it was right in my face but instead of just humbling myself I decided to run And I put myself in the deepest, darkest cave that I could possibly create. And I begin to question God on everything that I knew. And the very foundation that I believed was stable was completely uprooted from under my feet. And I found myself wrestling with God. There was a wrestle with the Lord. And so that makes me think about the story of Jacob and an encounter that he had with God. This is in the book of Genesis, the 32nd chapter. And God had just told Jacob to leave the land of his uncle Laban and to return to the land of his father, Isaac. And the Lord told Jacob that he would indeed be with him. Now, most of us understand that Jacob did not have the greatest of character. Uh, Jacob was manipulative. Jacob was deceitful. Uh, Jacob was conniving and underhanded, but yet he was called by God. 
So where we are now in Jacob's story is the place where God had to begin to deal with him a little bit differently. Because up until this point, God dealt with Jacob by speaking to him and affirming who he was in Jacob's life and affirming what Jacob was called to. Uh, but Jacob's biggest hang up was that he just didn't trust God. The same hang up that many of us have, regardless of what God had spoken to Jacob, regardless of what God had showed him, he just didn't trust God. But I believe that it's very important for us to understand that this distrust that Jacob had towards God, as well as the negative characteristics connected to that distrust, was passed on to Jacob through his ancestral line. Because if we look at his grandparents, Abraham and Sarah, we see that God had given them a specific promise that Sarah would bear a child. But because of their distrust, they tried to work their own hands and control their situation. And so they had Abraham live and have a child with Hagar. If we look at Jacob's mother, Rebekah, we see that when she was pregnant with Jacob and his brother Esau, the Lord gave her a word and he told her that she was carrying two nations within her belly. And he told her that one nation would be stronger than the other and that the older would be the one to serve the younger. Now when Rebekah gave birth, first came Esau, then came Jacob. So at that point, she knew that Jacob was the one to be the stronger nation and Esau would be the one to serve. But as Jacob and Esau began to grow older on the outside, Esau had all the characteristics of the one who was going to be the stronger nation. The Bible tells us that Esau was a skilled outdoorsman. Uh, he was a fine hunter, he was good with his hands, and more importantly, he was favored by his father, Isaac. So when it came time for Isaac to pass on his blessing, that deceitful, manipulative spirit rose up in Rebekah, and she told her son Jacob to disguise yourself as your brother, so that he would be the one to receive the blessing. So if we look at Jacob's grandparents and the attributes of their distrust, if we look at Jacob's mother and the attributes of her distrust, we can see how Jacob ended up battling the things that he did. How many of us know that we don't get to pick our demons? Uh, but that doesn't mean that God won't pick us to be the ones to deal with them. So God told Jacob, to return to the land of his father and that he would be with him. Now while Jacob was traveling, the Bible tells us that he was greeted by the angels of God. He recognized that they were the host of God and he called that place Mohenium. And at that point, Jacob decided to send his servants to send a message to his brother Esau. And he told his servants to tell Esau that I have been serving our uncle Laban for 20 years and as a result I have acquired many things. I have acquired cattle. I have acquired goats. I have acquired men and women servants. Because he felt that if Esau knew that he wasn't coming home empty handed then maybe he would find favor in Esau's sight. So the servants went and they delivered the message. And when they came back, the only reply that they had was that Esau is coming and he has 400 men with him. Now remember, God had already spoken to Jacob and told him that he would be with him. God had even reassured Jacob that he was indeed with him when he was greeted by the host of angels. But when Jacob was faced with the most uncomfortable of situations, what was in him came out. 
So God will speak to us and reassure us and speak to us and reassure us. But when we're just not getting it, God knows how to put us in the right type of environment to get us to see ourselves. So Jacob's biggest fear was on its way to him. It was on his way, an army of men with his brother that he did wrong was on its way to Jacob. So Jacob took his camp and he split it in two, believing that if one camp was to be overtaken, then the other camp would be able to escape. And after Jacob had split his camp, he began to pray to God. And while Jacob was praying to God, he said, God, you're the one who told me to return to the land of my father. You're the one who told me that you would indeed do well by me. Now my brother, who I did wrong, is on his way with an army. And he began to beg and plead with God to spare him the wrath of his brother. But how many of us know that we cannot manipulate God? So after the prayer, Jacob still didn't believe that God was not a man that he would lie. So he came up with another plan. And he told his servants to go again to meet with Esau. And tell him that everything that I have acquired will be yours if you would just spare me. All of my goats, all of my rams. All of my camels, all of my fowl, it's all yours if you would just have mercy on me. I will give it all to you. Just spare me and my family. So the servants went. And the Bible tells us that that night Jacob took his wives and his children. And he sent them over the brook. And then Jacob was left with only himself. And while Jacob was alone, the Bible says that a man appeared to Jacob. Some scholars believe that it was an angel of God. Some believe that it was God himself. But nevertheless, a man appeared to Jacob. And Jacob and the man began to wrestle. All night long, they wrestled. And when the man saw that he was not prevailing with Jacob, he touched the hollow of his thigh and he popped it out of its socket. When God saw that Jacob just wasn't getting it, when God saw that Jacob just wouldn't humble himself, he broke him and Jacob was afflicted. But the beautiful thing about this story, Pastor, is that at the point of being broken and afflicted, Jacob understood that without the strength of God, I will not be able to make it through my process. At the point of being broken and afflicted, Jacob understood. He condored obo si andor obo saya. Manda la basi he condored obo si e. Ora basi he condored obo si e. Jacob understood that in order for him to make it to the place that God called him to, he had to realign himself with his maker. So Jacob told the man that I can't let you go until I get what I need because at the point of being broken and afflicted Jacob understood that after the wrestle was over I'm either going to live or I'm going to die in my sins I can't let you leave until you bless me I 
can't depend on my own devices any longer. I can't let you leave. So the Bible says that the man then asked him, what is your name? And he told the man that my name is Jacob. Oh, people of God. And the man said to him, no longer will your name be Jacob. The self-helping, cunning supplanter. For surely now your name will be Israel. And I am giving you power with God and with man. So people of God, the only thing that I come here to tell you this morning is that some of us are coming to the end of our wrestle. Some of us are coming to the end of our resistance. And this is one of the most critical decisions that you're going to make in your walk with God. But if we will cease our fighting, if we will cease our resisting and humble ourselves under the authority of God, then God will propel us into our season of having power with God and with man. God will propel us into our season of prevailing in the spirit. So if I'm talking to anybody here this morning and you are ready to go into your next level with God, if I am talking to anybody here this morning and you are ready to surrender under the authority of the true and the living God, you can feel free to come to the altar. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. We surrender God. We surrender God. We lift our hands in surrender. Oh, oh. We repent this day, oh God, for fighting against your will, oh God. We repent this day, God, for resisting what you have called us to. We repent this day, oh God. We repent this day, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Go into the depths of our heart, Father. And we ask you to restore us back to you, God. We say yes to everything that you have called us to. We say yes to every trial. We say yes to the trying of our hearts, oh God. We say yes to the process, oh God. We say yes to the dealings, oh God. And we believe that it's for your glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Connect with your Father this morning. Connect with your Father this morning. There is an intimacy that God is calling us to. An intimacy with God. He 
He's pulling us closer to himself. But we've got to trust him. We've got to believe him. And we've got to be willing to do whatever is necessary so that he could be glorified through our lives. Connect with your father this morning. And we cancel the plan of the enemy today. We cancel his assignment. In the name of Jesus. We come against every foreign and foul voice that would speak into the ears of the people of God. We come against every seducing spirit that would try and draw God's people away from him. In the name of Jesus. We come against every witchcraft spirit in the name of Jesus that has been fighting against the people of God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we cancel every mute, deaf, and dumb spirit that has tried to attach itself to the saints of Almighty God. In the name of Jesus, 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 name of Jesus. Satan, we render you powerless this day by the power that has been given to us by the true and the living God. We stand up in our authority today and we say no more. No more will we give in. No more will we go back. No more will we back up. We declare this day that we are standing on what God has spoken to us. We declare this day that we will bring glory to God. If that is you this afternoon, go ahead and Shabbat the Lord. Go ahead and Shabbat your God. Go ahead and Shabbat your King. He under the
Rondele Bussi, Rosuto Robo Santa La Macala, Yele Bussi Canta La Bussi. We bless and we honor you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for made up mind. Hallelujah. God, we give you praise. Oh, we give you glory and honor. Hallelujah to God. Come on, let's clap our hands for Prophet Tyrone. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for speaking. Come here, prophet. Come. God be the glory. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Thank you, Father. To God be the glory. Thank you, God. that God can bring you out. Hallelujah, right in our midst. Hallelujah, Jesus. I give God glory, amen. If you're here and you don't know Jesus as your personal savior, you don't know him in the remission of your sins and you wanna be saved, 